let's try to understand the code changes we need to do and we'll also see a demo once this is done you can see that apart from these two libraries which were added in our previous video i have also added the keycloak admin client the version should be above 20.0.1 as you can see i have also changed the versions for the above two since i want to maintain the consistency one thing you need to note here is if your admin client version is 22.0.5 the key clock server should also be 22.0.5 in a sense whatever the version of your application is running the same version library has to be used this is not applicable to these two you can ignore them but since i want to have them inconsistent that's the reason i have changed them to this and if you see the key clock server version I'm using 22.0.5. If these two versions do not match, then the application will give some errors. And also, uh, if you use 22.0.1 and the server of any version, it works, but it has a workaround. Let's not dive into the complexities. We'll keep them as simple as possible. So apart from this, for each of the REST API, call we need some credentials so those are defined here the ream name is dive hyphen dev and the server url as you already know our server is running on 8081 the key clock server and client id should be admin cli and not spring boot be because only this admin cli works for the rest api calls and the grant type is password here the name is admin and the password is demo123 in a sense this user will have the access to perform the client api calls and if you are defining certain user with the credentials and saying that this guy has the access then you need to add the role for this user and that role is ream admin if you see here in the dive hyphen dev in the users i have a user called admin and for this user we need to add the role of ream admin you can do that here filter and with this label ream management you'll find ream admin you'll not see here because we have already added it and these will be used in key cloak security utility i have created a component class with this name and this is being created to initialize a object for key cloak this class i want an instance of this class and this is responsible to invoke all of the rest api calls from the spring boot application to the key cloak so if you see whatever the definitions we had here we are just fetching it over here using this at the rate value i am defining a method called key cloak get key cloak instance if the key cloak object this object is null so we need to build the object in a sense we need to create an instance of key cloak which can be done using this key cloak builder we'll give all of our properties whichever we have fetched from here and just build the key clock builder so that we can get the key clock object and as you have seen i do not want to send a plain user list so here we are trying to understand the create and fetch list of users so for that i do not want to use the user representation from key clock so that's the reason we have this dto user first name last name email username and password and a user resource as you might have seen in the previous video we had the rest api called slash key clock slash users so this is where we have implemented that and i'm using this security util this one so that i can utilize the key clock object to invoke the apis from the key clock server to fetch the list of users what i'm going to do is just get the instance of the key clock and 
geekloak.ream.users.list. So if you see this object has several objects and internal objects. Let's see what happens here. If you see here keycloak.ream with the ream name and our ream name here is dive-dev which means we are telling to go to the keycloak's ream for this ream and fetch the list of users. So once this is called it returns the list of user representations and if you see the user representation has several properties and we do not need all of these properties to be made aware to our user and that's the reason we have created this user DTO and once we got this I'm just mapping this user list to our list of users here looping and adding a list of user this is just a one-to-one -one relationship you can see here we are mapping the user representation to the user and returning the list of users and to create a new user if you see i'm getting a user object from the ui and this user object is mapped to the user representation because keycloak understands only user representation and not our user so what we are doing here mapping a user if you see here creating a new user representation and these properties are just direct mappings we need to enable the user and that's the reason we have added this and i am also saying that the email is verified it is up to you how you want to implement and then to add the user's password we need to create the list of credential representation and within that credential representation we are creating one object of credential representation and this set temporary false because if it is true so user has to change the password and we do not want to have it right now so that's the reason the temporary is false here we are setting the password and adding this object to the credentials and this list of credential representations are added to the user representation and once the user representation is ready i'm getting the instance of key cloak and within this ream users create a user let's run the application and see let me start let me reload again and one more thing if you see here we have slash key cloak and slash users and this api path is not added to our public list so what do we need to do we need to provide the access to the admin here in the key cloak clients authorization so we have to define a resource key cloak admin resource and the path is slash key cloak slash star because all the apis which i'm going to define will prepend with the slash key cloak for the rest api definitions and i have added all their authorization scopes this is because we have enabled the http scope for our application and the policies so key cloak admin policy only admin user has the access to this the permission and just mapping the resource with the policy and i did not create this permission as the scope based but the resource based because i'm i'm not restricting any scope here and we go to the users list of users let's see what all users do we have we have six users and if i try it says you do not have the permission let's log in using admin here we have logged in using admin let's try it out again you can see there was no authentication bearer now we see list of users which are present here in the key cloak application and let's create a new user so we defined this post api let's try to create a user shreya goshal as 
you can see here and one thing you need to note is you need to provide the email in the email format else it will give you an error let me create so it says a user is created so before you can see there was no shreya let's reload it here and let's see if we are able to log in as well and authorize so it has the access so this is how we can create a user as well as fetch the list of users in our next video we'll see how to create the ream roles as well that's it for this video thanks for watching